Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. This broadcast is a product of Shrine Media, LLC. Unauthorized use, sale, or redistribution of this media in any form is strictly prohibited without the express written consent of Shrine Media. Radio and television mediums are encouraged to reach out. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the game. You're ready to reconnect, to discover, to explore a Georgia that always has more stories to share and views to admire. Set for your next adventure while you set your own pace to wonder or wander or whatever it is that makes you feel you. To feel that Georgia feeling, those beautiful, real... Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. This broadcast is a product of Shrine Media, LLC. Unauthorized use, sale, or redistribution of this media in any form is strictly prohibited without the express written consent of Shrine Media. Radio and television mediums are encouraged to reach out. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the game. You're ready to reconnect, to discover, to explore a Georgia that always has more stories to share and views to admire. Set for your next adventure while you set your own pace to wonder or wander or whatever it is that makes you feel you. To feel that Georgia feeling, those beautiful, real, honest moments. The only found in Georgia moments. Find yours at exploregeorgia.org. My character, Shazam, knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. Ah! And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward.
Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. See, Smokey thinks I'm funny. Welcome to SESN, your ticket to the front row of the sports world, covering local, regional, and national events. We bring the game to you. Feel the excitement of every play, every score, every victory. Get your seat, get on air, and immerse yourself in the heart-pounding action. The Southeast Sports Network, where sports come to life.
Vacation is now playing in Tennessee. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation. States has been written for centuries, penned by millions of authors, written in every language, from every perspective, with every chapter as unique as our people and our land. Our story is one made up of many. Find yours in the USA. In life, Things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, we see champions everywhere we look. In every sport, on every court, we're building a foundation to ensure all athletes are safe, supported, and strengthened. At the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, ending abuse is not just our job. It's our promise. A truck is a tool, but a ram, a ram is life. Yeah, it's the wipe the sweat off your brow sort of life. But it's also the let's load up the ATV's life. The my kids play way too many sports life. The let's find a secret spot to fish life. That looks nice. Innovations, comforts, and powertrains built to power all the lives you live. Ram.
involved in officiating volleyball eight years after I played Division I in college. Saying yes to volleyball officiating will give you the privilege to be a part of one of the most exciting sports around. I'm a speaker. A builder. I coach. Culinary arts. Auditor. A firefighter. For anyone contemplating becoming a volleyball official. Just go for it. Take the plunge. Open the door. Say yes to officiating. Learn more about how to get involved at sayyestoofficiating.com. The rhythmic sound of more than 500 cascading waterfalls. The endless echo of more than 10,000 caves. The serene silence of a thousand miles of wilderness trails. The next time someone tells you to get lost, consider it an opportunity. Your vacation is now playing in Tennessee. Welcome to the new era of brand promotion. Are you trying to find a way to make a splash? We understand that advertising isn't what it used to be. Things have changed. Advertising is both more dynamic and more engaging. Shry Media keeps your brand not just seen, but remembered. In a world where staying relevant is key, we are your partners in staying top of mind. Media, we believe in the power of connection, promoting your brand while supporting your community. Our goal is to elevate your presence and amplify your message through local sports. With Shry Media, advertising goes beyond traditional boundaries. Get on television, make an impact, take the first step towards a future where your brand is not just seen, but celebrated. The Southeast Sports Network, your free ticket to front row sports action. From heart-pounding football showdowns to thrilling basketball games, experience every moment live. All from the comfort of your home. Your favorite athletes, broadcast in real time and on demand. It's not just streaming, it's your front row ticket to the best of Southeastern sports. And the best part, it's absolutely free. Don't miss a moment of your favorite teams. Join us now at the Southeast Sports Network. 
the Southeast Sports Network, your front row ticket to live sports. Welcome to Alaska, Georgia. We're about to get underway. Just a few minutes from first pitch in game two of three between the fire of Southeastern University and Reinhardt University's Eagles. Number 11, Reinhardt hosting in Maleska, Georgia from Ken White Field. It's the number one Southeastern fire on the road. 18 wins straight. They beat Reinhardt by 13 runs in game one. We'll be back with first pitch and all of the action from Alaska in just a few moments on the Southeast Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. You're ready to reconnect, to discover, to explore a Georgia that always has more stories to share and views to admire. Set for your next adventure while you set your own pace to wonder or wander or whatever it is that makes you feel you. To feel that Georgia feeling, those beautiful, real, honest moments. The only found in Georgia moments. Find yours at exploregeorgia.org. My character, Shazam, knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Welcome to SESN, your ticket to the front row of the sports world, covering local, regional, and national events. We bring the game to you. Feel the excitement of every play, every score, every victory. Get your seat, get on air, and immerse yourself in the heart-pounding action. The Southeast Sports Network. 
where sports come to life. At Shry Media, we believe in the power of connection, promoting your brand while supporting your community. Our goal is to elevate your presence and amplify your message through local sports. With Shry Media, advertising goes beyond traditional boundaries. Get on television, make an impact. Take the first step towards a future where your brand is not just seen, but celebrated. Vacation is now playing in Tennessee. Southeast Sports Network, your free ticket to front row sports action. From heart-pounding football showdowns to thrilling basketball games, experience every moment live. All from the comfort of your home. Your favorite athletes, broadcast in real time and on demand. It's not just streaming, it's your front row ticket to the best of Southeastern sports. And the best part? It's absolutely free. Don't miss a moment of your favorite teams. Join us now at the Southeast Sports Network. The Southeast Sports Network, your front row ticket to live sports. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis. Always faithful, always marine, marking a path for the next generation.
you're ready to reconnect, to discover, to explore a Georgia that always has more stories to share and views to admire. Set for your next adventure while you set your own pace to wonder or wander or whatever it is that makes you feel you. To feel that Georgia feeling, those beautiful, real, honest moments. The only found in Georgia moments. Find yours at exploregeorgia.org. My character, Shazam, knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Welcome to SESN, your ticket to the front row of the sports world, covering local, regional, and national events. We bring the game to you. Feel the excitement of every play, every score, every victory. Get your seat, get on air, and immerse yourself in the heart-pounding action. The Southeast Sports Network, where sports come to life. Welcome to Waleska, Georgia, and Ken Whitefield. Thanks for being with us this afternoon for College Baseball. Game two, a doubleheader this Friday afternoon. Gabriel Shry here with Lorenzo Robinson. Thrilled to have you along for the ride for game two. It's number one, Southeastern University, the Fire, and number 11, Reinhardt University, the Eagles. A really good matchup in store. Lorenzo, your thoughts on what to expect in game two? Well, just a few moments ago, we saw Southeastern just absolutely dominate against the Reinhardt Eagles. Reinhardt jumped out to an early five runs to nothing lead. Southeastern responded with a 15 run, like just a barrage. Like it was, it was insane. So I would expect Reinhardt to come out with a new sense of energy, new sense of focus. And meanwhile, Southeastern, they still want to prove why they're the team everybody's trying to catch up to around the country. Yeah, all, all Southeastern in that first matchup. Reinhardt looked really good in the first three innings, but Southeastern exploded down the stretch against the Eagles. At one point, 10 unanswered runs. Reinhardt going to look to right the ship in game two and hang a few runs on the fire of SCU. Certainly capable of doing so. These are two really, really good programs. Excited to see what they bring to the field. In this second game, we'll play all nine in game two, and we'll have game three tomorrow as well, noon Eastern time, first pitch. You can watch all three of these broadcasts and everything we broadcast on Southeast Sports Network from Reinhardt University, LJ Telephone Company, ETC3, live online, SESNsports.com. You can download our Amazon Fire TV app. Visit our website, go to the, the drop-down, watch live, and click onto the Fire TV app there to go directly to the download link. You can find us on Stream TV, stream.com, and, of course, YouTube. Find us at the Southeast Sports Network and all of our games we do at Reinhardt are simulcast to the Reinhardt Eagles YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and type in Southeast Sports Network or Reinhardt Eagles to find the games. Thrilled to have you along for the ride. This is going to be a really good one. A quick look at the breakdown of these two teams. We'll start with the Eagles. Now, this graphic is a little outdated because they just lost. So now they're 20 and 11 overall. 329 batting as a team, 41 home runs entering the weekend. On the other side, Southeastern's fire. They've bolstered their win streak. Now it's 18 games straight. 29 and 2 overall, 302 batting as a team. Unbelievable stats. We're ready to go. Reinhardt will take the field first. Reinhardt, Reinhardt, Eagles, 
Southeastern will play on the top of the innings at the plate. Fans fired up for this second game. This is Josh Pagozo, you see, kind of in the center right side of your screen, wearing number 23. He was good in game one. He'll be the first we see at the plate, and pitching the lead off in the top of the first is Andrew Herbert for Reinhardt's Eagles. Andrew Herbert was a first-team all-conference performer and honorable mention All-American selection a season ago. And he's picked up right where he left off so far this year. Just been so dominant on the mound for Reinhardt. He looks to go up against this very, very difficult Southeastern lineup. Definitely excited to see how he performs in this second game to lead us off. Both programs ready to go. We've taken a look at a few of the numbers. Again, I want to revisit an 18-game win streak now for Southeastern's fire. Just unbelievable how dominant they've been. They've only lost one time on the road all season long. Unanimously, number one in the NAIA Baseball Coaches Top 25. Clearly well-deserved. Absolutely, and again, Reinhardt has been a team that has been able to compete with some of the best in the country, but part of that next step, taking that next step, is being able to see those teams on the field and beat those teams as well. So the Eagles will have a nice chance here to make a statement going up against number one. Herbert to take the mound for Reinhardt. Thanks again for being with us. If you're just joining us, it's number one Southeastern University, the Fire, and the number 11 Reinhardt University Eagles. I'm Gabriel Shry. This is Lorenzo Robinson. Lorenzo plays on the football team here at Reinhardt University, and just a few minutes ago, the head coach of Reinhardt University's <laughs> football team, James Miller, showed up. And if you don't know James Miller, the guy's a character. He's about six foot ten, played at Virginia Tech, <laughs> and he brought food over here for Lorenzo and started feeding him in the middle of the game. I love it. That's a good coach. That's definitely a great coach, and you know, definitely a person. It's nice to have in your corner, I would say. Popped up to the right side, trending foul. Reinhardt looking to run it down for the first. And that'll go, one away. Really well tracked in the outfield, able to get into that. Gets a glove on it. And the first down of the top of the first for the Eagles. Big swing. Nunez chops this right side, rattling into the outfield, and he's cut down at the bag at first. Two away. Now batting, number 12, the catcher, David Castillo. Reinhardt is usually very strong defensively in the field. A few unforced errors in the previous game. Look for them to try to clean those up. Count 1-0, -oh, two away. Well delivered, strike one. Took a big swing at that, just couldn't get the barrel onto the ball. Popped up, this goes foul. Strike two, counts one and two, two away.
Down inside, that's gonna be our second ball. It seemed like the entirety of Reinhardt's team felt like that was a strike. Andrew Herbert was walking off the mound. It seemed like everyone was just certain that that was gonna be a strike and the umpire not agreeing. He has to lock back in and try to close the deal. So the count is full. This is David Castillo on the plate, the leading hitter for the fire. 388 average, consistent performance, day in, day out at the plate for SEU. Herbert lasers that inside and punches him out. Three away, that'll retire the side. We'll be back in just a moment with more college baseball on SCSN. Join SESN for an unmatched sports experience. Dive into the world of game highlights, real-time updates, and electrifying coverage. With SESN, you're not just watching sports, you're living them. Be the first to know, the first to see, and the first to share every big moment. The Southeast Sports Network, where sports come to life. Welcome back to Ken White Field and Waleska, Georgia. College Baseball Southeast Sports Network. The bottom of the first game two between number one Southeastern University, number 11 Reinhardt University. Gabriel Shry here with Lorenzo Robinson. Thanks for being with us down alongside Ken White Field today. Thrilled to have you along for all the action with us. It's gonna be a really good one. Game two of a three game series. Game one, the fire exploded after the third inning and ran away with it. Absolutely. And so for Reinhardt, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're playing catch up. You want to try to take the momentum and then stay on that side of it. You don't want to lose that plot because then it becomes, again, I said it during the first game, when that ball gets going downhill, it's hard to stop it. And you know how good Southeastern is. So you have a chance to build some early momentum. You have to seize that opportunity and hold on to it with both hands. Scoreless after the top of the first. Herbert looking really sharp to lead off in game two. Now we'll get our first look at Reinhardt batting in game two. Jarrett Burney at the plate. Rob Adams pitching to start this game for Southeastern. Laser down inside, roped right side by Burney and he's cut down at first, one away. Now batting number 12, the designated hitter, Richard Cash. Oh. Well, Bernie got good contact. I'm not sure if that's what he had in mind when he got a hold of the ball. Obviously, gets cut down at first. Richard Castro replaces him at the plate, and we'll get to work for the Eagles. Richard Castro's a guy who transferred into Reinhardt one season ago. Very capable at the plate. Castro ropes this right side, ball sailing, and that one gonna go over the line. Couldn't keep it inside the chalk. And Castro is a transfer, native to Los Angeles, California, came to Reinhardt from Concordia University, Irvine. Senior infielder, he's 6'3", a righty. Had decent contact on that, just wouldn't drop in play. He's had big games in a Reinhardt uniform. He's had a game where he hit three home runs. He's had five for five games. He's definitely a very capable bat for this club. And the 
guy that even though he hasn't had a ton of at-bats so far this year, this just his 35th, it's definitely beneficial to have someone who is a veteran of college baseball that you can play at any moment. Rob Adams out ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh, Big swing, and that'll send Castro back to the dugout. Two away for the Southeastern Fire. Castro going to be replaced by Tucker Zadunik at the plate. Zadunik, a regular face in this Reinhardt lineup. If you're not familiar, he's had a great season as well. Senior outfielder, High River, Alberta, Canada native. Transferred to Reinhardt from Colby Community College. Zadunik, one of the very best players in the country. But he had a very rough go at it in the first one of this doubleheader. Went 0 for 5 in the first game against Southeastern. It's rare to see him have two bad games in a row. So expect him to bounce back in this one. Two away count is 0 and 1. Rob Adams, a senior from Arcadia, Florida, went to DeSoto County High School. He's looking to ramp up the bottom of the first. Popped up left side. Looks like this will sail foul for Reinhardt. Count is 0 and 2 with two away. Holds off on that. Dropped in. Well delivered by Adams. Count is one and two. Two, two, two away. Popped right side, floating towards the outfield, tracked well, and that'll retire the side as we go to the top of the second in Waleska, Georgia. We'll be back with more college baseball on SESN. From the campus of Reinhardt University in Alaska, Georgia, number one Southeastern Fire on the road, 18 games straight, taking on the number 11 Reinhardt University Eagles in a non-conference matchup. This is awesome. What a great series this weekend between these two programs. Fans out in force in Alaska, Georgia, and the Fire gonna be back at the plate. This guy was a hero in game one, Chase Bryant. called it. He was a hero in the last game. And his home run, as soon as it left his bat, he said, get out of there. He knew as soon as it left the bat that it was gone. It's the caliber of player he is. Very confident at the plate. Blasted this. Play at the bag over at first, and looks like he made it. Safe. Jarrett Bernie made a great dive over there near third base to collect that one. Very nearly able to get the out. Brian able to leg it out. Now batting number 37, the first baseman Gary Laura.
Gary Laura looked good in game one. Crucial piece this year for SCU. Suffers a strike on his first appearance at the plate in game two. Andrew Herbert's looking sharp early for Reinhardt. Chopped foul, left side, count 0 and 2. Zipped right in. Ball delivered. That'll send him back to the dugout. Andrew Herbert doing what Andrew Herbert does. Another big time strikeout there. Now batting number 22, the second baseman, Christopher Munez. It's really a case of strength against strength. Herbert, one of the better pitchers in the country, going up against one of the most talented lineups in the country. One on board over at first, it's Chase Bryant. This is Christopher Munoz at the plate. Munoz, utility guy, 6'1", righty from Bronx, New York, played at James Monroe High. The junior transferred to Southeastern from Western Oklahoma State. Count is 1-0, one away. Top of the second from Aleska, Georgia. This is Munoz at the plate for Southeastern's fire. Southeastern, number one in the nation, Reinhardt number 11. 20 win, Reinhardt Eagles. 29 wins, Southeastern fire, including winning game one of this series, their 18th in a row, which is just mind bending to me. 18 straight is crazy. Being able to win 18 straight in any sport, in any capacity, in any facet is it's definitely something that's hard to wrap your mind around. And then if you're a fan of the Eagles, you feel like Reinhardt's hot too. 14 and four in their last 18 games. Popped up, sailing towards the center of the outfield. He's gone, two away in Moleska. We're seeing the start right now eerily similar to the start that the fire had in the first game. Not a whole lot of action. The bat still trying to wake up. Now batting number five, the right fielder, Landry Wilkerson. Landry Wilkerson roped one. Very end of game one for the homer, the junior from Van Buren, Arkansas. Transferred from Louisiana Lafayette. We had a little laugh about how to pronounce Lafayette, Lafayette. Or Lafette, depending Lafette, on where you're from. Yeah, that's a real argument. My favorite city that's pronounced differently in the southeast has got to be Cairo. Cairo. Cairo, Cairo, <laughs> Cairo. How, which one is which? The people that I know that are from there say Cairo. They've got the coolest mascot I think I've ever seen a high school have. They're one of my favorites. The syrup makers. Yes, that is an awesome <laughs> mascot. It's definitely unique. I can't say I've heard anyone else have something like that. No, that's a cool one. There's a high school in Illinois with the Velociraptors or the Raptors. Velociraptors. There's another one. <laughs> I don't know if it's Illinois or Indiana, but they're the Shells, like the gas company. Roxana, <laughs> Roxana High School Shells. Sent foul, two away, count is one and two in Waleska. Top of the second. 
I know the Angels have a minor league team named the Trash Pandas or something like that. Something along those lines. Yeah, I like the Trash Pandas. Harry Carey, legendary Chicago baseball announcer on the radio. His grandson is the play-by-play -play announcer for them. Josh Carey. Count is two and two, two away. Framed wall by the catcher, and that'll be ball three to fill the count with two away. Scoreless in the top of the second from Molesco between the number one fire and number 11 Eagles on SCSN. The payoff pitch for Herbert. Chopped, and he stays alive, fouling off into the netting. Really nice crowd for the second game. Lots of folks turned out in Waleska at Ken White. Wilkerson really making Herbert work for this out. Chopped off, fouls off left side. Saw Southeastern take that approach throughout the previous game. And they would just stay alive in that bats, facing one, two counts, two, two counts, working it into a full count, just staying alive. More often than not, Reinhardt's pitchers were walking them to base, and then Southeastern was able to cash in. Blast to this. Well played, that'll retire the side from Alaska. We'll be back to the bottom of the second in just a moment on SCSN. The Sports Network is now on Amazon Fire TV. Now you can download the SESN app and watch on any Amazon-enabled device, such as your Fire Stick. The easiest way to download the app is to go to our website, find the Watch SESN tab, and click Fire TV app. Then just select your device from the list. That's it. Free and easy. Enjoy watching the Southeast Sports Network on your Fire TV fire stick or fire tablet with just a few clicks. Welcome back to beautiful Ken White Field here in Maleska, Georgia. The Reinhardt Eagles in the Southeastern Fire knotted up all square at zero. Andrew Herbert on the mound for the Eagles. He's having a phenomenal showing so far. Already with three strikeouts through two innings. Reinhardt, they're going to try to make their mark at the plate. The Eagles had a fast start at the plate in the previous game. They put up five runs in the first three innings, really tailed off as the game continued. So the Eagles hoping for some of that similar mojo to start things off here in the second. First man coming up to the plate, Nash Cole, the first baseman. Tied in the team lead for home runs with nine. Entered today with a 342 batting average. He's really come on as of late. Absolutely sensational over the past 10 or so games. Kroll, a big swing, strike one in the bottom of the second. Two quick strikes for Nash Kroll. Junior first baseman, originally from Nova Scotia, transferred to Reinhardt from Bismarck. Stays alive as he fouls off into the Evergreens. Beautiful setting. I love Ken Whitefield. I love University Stadium. Really unmatched as far as collegiate sports go. This North Georgia setting nestled amongst the foothills of the Smoky Mountains is just unbeatable. 
views are very picturesque around the field. Down low for the ball. Count is two and two. None away. Bottom of the second. Reinhardt at the plate. Nash Kroll. Pitching to him is Rob Adams. The 2-2 two -two pitch chopped left side, rattling along the chalk. It stays fair, and he's cut down before he can make it to first. What a way in the bottom of the second. Reinhard Eagles move on to the next man in the lineup, Dylan Lewis. And Lewis was a hero in game one, scored a late run. He's been good all season. The DH, especially effective at the plate. Dylan Lewis entering today, batting well over 400 as well. Also another guy atop that team lead for home runs with nine. Count is 1-1. One, one. He's a very consistent presence at the plate for the Eagles as well. Seems like no matter the situation, no matter the game, Dylan Lewis generally comes through for Reinhardt. That's strike two. Dylan Lewis batting 418 this season. Nearly 42%. Really impressive. He and Tucker Zadunik, the firepower offensively for Reinhardt. Stood by, ball two, count is two and two with one away, bottom of the second. Zadunik blasts this left side. He's gone. Two away from Maleska, Georgia. A nice heads-up play there by Nunes to recover right. that one. Number 11, that was a really nice play. I'm not sure how we saw that coming. It's that sixth sense that you have to have. He's got it. I didn't have it. That's why I wasn't very good. I would have been hit in the face of that one. <laughs> no question. Sadunik followed by Luis Mendoza, the redshirt sophomore from Panama. Transferred to Reinhardt from Coffeyville Community College. Two away. Just a bit wide on the delivery on that. The 2-1 pitch popped up, and with two away, the fire can retire the side. Done well. That'll take us to the third inning from Waleska, Georgia, in a scoreless game between the fire of Southeastern University and the Reinhardt Eagles. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. College Baseball, SCSN. Welcome back to the campus of Reinhardt University and Ken Whitefield. Thanks for being with us. College baseball on SCSN. It's number one, number 11, as we enter the top of the third, scoreless between these two programs. 
You called it Andrew Herbert looking really good for Reinhardt. We were talking about that off the air as the game got underway. It's crazy to think that this is a guy who's going to be an Eagle for at least two more seasons as well. Herbert lets this one get chopped. A play down at the bag at first, and Kroll makes the play. One away. If you're just joining us, I'm Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson here with me. Thrilled to have you along for the ride. Beautiful, sunshiny weather in Waleska, Florida. College baseball number one, number 11. One away already on the top of the third. This is Tommy Davis. Suffers strike one. Count is 0-1-1 with one away. Davis, an infielder. The righty is a senior from Federal Way, Washington. Played his prep at Todd Beamer High. Popped to the left side. Another play down at first, and Kroll comes through again for Reinhardt. Two away. Reinhardt defensively. They are locked in that infield, making every play imaginable. Now it's extremely critical, especially for a guy like Herbert. You know he's not going to give up a whole lot of big contact plays, so it's going to be some ground balls. You're going to have to cover some ground and make some plays. Right now, that infield doing exactly that. This one dropped in for strike one. We've got all kinds of great people watching from around the world. Nathan Peterson, thanks for tuning in. He's down in Rome, Georgia, a local guy. Big fan of his work. NAI ball caught game one. I'm hoping they're still tuned in. Appreciate you guys following along today on SCSN. Very grateful for LJ Telephone Company carrying all of our broadcasts from Reinhardt University on ETC3. Really cool they do that for all of North Georgia, the community, to be able to watch some local college athletics. And cool to see them do that for Reinhardt University as well. The one-two pitch was a bit wide, so that's ball two. Two away, count is two and two for Herbert. Working at the plate, the outfielder, Josh Pagozo, a senior from Palm Harbor, Florida. In the turf, that fills our count. With two away, it's a full count for Herbert. Reinhardt looking to go to the bottom of the third. Herbert, the payoff pitch, delivered inside and stepping out of the way. That'll walk him. And that's more emblematic of what we saw a lot from Southeastern in the last game, working themselves into long counts, forcing the pitcher to pitch deep into these counts and getting walked. And then more often than not, the next batter, the next couple of batters were able to capitalize off of that. Two away, Pagozo down on the bag at one. This is low, and Josh is going to advance down to second, now in scoring position. Good heads-up play. He saw that immediately and took off. Isaac Nunez is at the plate at bat for the fire of Southeastern, a 6-1 infielder and a senior. Originally from Altamonte Springs, Florida. Played prep at Lake Brantley High School. Transferred from the University of Florida, a former Gator. Now plays to the fire. Left side. Taken up, and the play down at one will retire the side. What an arm by the shortstop. We'll be back with the bottom of the third on SCSN. Don't go anywhere. The Sports Network is now on Amazon Fire TV. Now you can download the SESN app and watch on any Amazon-enabled device, such as your Fire Stick. The easiest way to download the app is to go to our website, find the Watch SESN tab, and click Fire TV app. Then just select your device from the list. That's it. Free and easy. Enjoy watching the Southeast Sports Network on your Fire TV, Fire Stick, or Fire Tablet with just a few clicks. Just shouted out a couple of folks we know are tuned in from around the country. We appreciate them joining us for our coverage. 
want to invite you to let us know where you're tuned in from. Especially if you're somewhere cool. Like, I don't want to hear you're up the street. I want to know who's watching from Alaska or overseas. If you are watching from somewhere cool or have an interesting story to share, the best way to do it is through Twitter. And I'll try and check the tweets in the middle of announcing the game. Be sure to tweet at me and Lorenzo. The handles are on screen now. We'd love to hear if you're tuned in somewhere cool. I don't know. what the, We've got a few this year that were interesting, right? At the Dakotas. <laughs> yeah, somebody from <laughs> South Dakota. I almost went to South Dakota this weekend, and I did not because of the weather. Wow. Just that sentence alone. I almost went to South Dakota. I just want to be at a point where I can say that. I mean, it wasn't like I was, like, excited, like, oh, I can't wait to go to South Dakota. Well, I could. I was excited, but, you know, it's cold. I would do it just to say I've done it. One of those bucket list kind of things. There's a great university there, Dakota State University. And I was planning on making a trip out there to visit the football program, talk to the athletic director. And the weather just kind of put the kibosh on the plans of my friends and I. So I'll get out there sometime this year. I'm trying to fly, though, to Dakota State University. It's in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They have an airport there. It's a city of 200,000, but flights are limited. You got to fly into Minneapolis and drive four and a half hours one way to get there. Wow. I mean, that's almost the best option. The best option? That's almost. I think it just depends on how flexible you are on flights. Yeah. I don't want to fly in and sit around for three days and wait for a meet. You know what I mean? I, don't, I, got, I got stuff to do. <laughs> got to announce baseball at Reinhardt. Come on. Count is one and one. Eagles at the plate. Big swing, strike two. Bottom of the third from Oleska, Georgia. Rob Adams on the mound. This is Mercerio Allen at the plate. Ump not letting that slide. Count is one and two. Allen's a junior infielder from Decatur, Georgia. Transferred from Southern Wesley into Reinhardt. Also, the reigning defending AAC Player of the Week as well. Very stellar three-game series against Kentucky Wesleyan. Yeah, I heard he crushed it against Kentucky Wesleyan. Rob Adams, the ump, talking it out. Blake Payton was Tennessee Wesleyan's Player of the Week for the AAC. He was the Pitcher of the Week, Allen the Player of the Week. They just made that announcement on Monday. Allen won the award as he chops this left side, and he'll be the first out at the bottom of the third. Rosario Allen won the award, batted 556 to help Reinhardt go 3-0, had two home runs, seven RBIs in those three games, six runs scored. That's nuts. Walked four times for an on-base percentage of almost 60. 59 and change. Stole a couple of bases. That was his first Player of the Week award this season. And on paper, it looks crazy. The stats look crazy. But watching him play in person during last week, it looked even crazier. It just seemed like he couldn't do any wrong at the plate for the Eagles. Alex Galvez won the award for Reinhardt back in Week 3. Nash Kroll won an award for Player of the Week for the AAC in Week 4. Mercerio Allen's turn was up to win the Player of the Week award for the Appalachian Athletic Conference. The conference does such a good job week in and week out. Jay Stansel, Coach Pop, big fan. You can follow the Appalachian Athletic Conference on social media at AAC Sports. I can't tell you how often they get tagged on Twitter as the ACC, and their responses are always hilarious. <laughs> uh, we didn't know we added Clemson to our conference. <laughs> oh, Syracuse, I love it. You get a crack out of it. Every never gets old. It's definitely a time of a lot of engagement for the ACC as well. 
The count is full with one away for the Eagles of Reinhardt. Bottom of the third, this is Matty Mara, the catcher. Chopped right side, rattles and rolls into the outfield, and he's on board at first. That was a big time gap shot there from Maurer. That's Reinhardt's first hit of this ball game, just the second between these two teams. And maybe that's what the Eagles needed to kind of get this ball rolling a little bit. So the junior catcher from New York is on board over at first. Following him to the plate, a senior outfielder from High River, Alberta, Canada. Jamel Rooker did not play in game one. One on board, one away. That's strike one for Rooker. Rooker makes it down to the bag. They'll say he's out. That was a good attempt there from Rooker. He tried to leg it out. Nice play there, though, by Rob Adams to track that one and make the nice little toss to first base. But Doyle, the pinch runner, is in scoring position at second. And that was really close. Jarrett Burney now going to come to the plate, a senior from Sewanee, Georgia. Played prep at North Gwinnett High. 5'11 infielder, he's a righty. Two away. Big swing there. One runner on board out at second. Scoring position. You already mentioned it, but it's Parker Doyle who's out there on second. Count is one and one with two away. Scoreless between number one. Number 11, Southeastern and Reinhardt. How about Doyle sneaking down to third, now in prime scoring position. But Adams trying to make that all for naught. Just one strike away from retiring the side. Shout out to Greg Allen, who's tuned in from Newcastle, Australia, rooting for the Reinhardt Eagles. That is an absolutely unique place. That's, that's the best that's one we've got right all year there. for Reinhardt, yeah. Australia. Okay. Race down to first and not going to win that. That'll retire the side as we'll see the fire come back to the plate when we come back from the break. College baseball scoreless between number one and number 11 on SCSN. Welcome back to Alaska, Georgia. College baseball, Southeast Sports Network, scoreless here between these two programs. It's number one and number 11 as we've entered into the top of the fourth from Ken Whitefield. Thrilled to have you along for the ride. Folks out in full force for this one between the Eagles and the Fire on SCSN. I'm Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson here with me. Starting to lose the sun a little bit. I have a feeling we'll be wrapping up under the lights at Ken White. Seems like a good bet. 
It's just 540, though, you know. Zipped right in for strike one. Herbert getting that one clocked at 90 miles an hour. This is David Castillo. He's been electric batting this year for Southeastern. Castillo, a catcher, a junior from Panama. Played his prep at Brito Miami Private School. Transferred from Chipola College to Southeastern. The six foot two righty batting 388 this season as he chops this one and can't win the race down at first. And how about Jared Bernie? That nice throw over there from third to first. It seems like week in and week out, he's just making tremendous plays in the field for Reinhardt. I feel guilty because Bernie's so good. It's it's like routine, you know. I you don't he doesn't get enough credit for that. But they say the great players make the routine look easy. And it says routine and it's supposed to be easy, but far too often the routine is not simple for most players. One away count is 0 and 1. The 0-2 pitch, chopped right side. This one sails into the Evergreens. Staying alive. And he had that big home run in the last game. He's one for one so far in this one. The only member of the fire to record a hit so far in this one. Chase Bryant goes down the left side chalk. Still 0-2, one away. Herbert lasers that in, fouled off again. Ball one, count is one and two, one away. Yeah. Chopped left side, scooped up by the shortstop and lasered down to first. That was a nice play in the field there from Luis Mendoza, that toss over there to first. I think he heard us giving Jared Burney a lot of credit in the field, and he said, wait, guys, I can do something, too. You aren't kidding. He can do something. He threw that one-footed, fading, perfect very, ball to Kroll. Very reminiscent of Derek Jeter. Popped up, sailing to the outfield. Reinhardt has a chance to retire the side, and they will. Three away, we'll go to break and be back on SCSN for the other half of this inning. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Alaska, Georgia. College baseball, SESN, were scoreless and into the bottom of the fourth between the number one team and number 11 team in the nation. Reinhardt University Eagles, number 11, hosting the number one Southeastern University Fire. SCU exploded down the back half in game one. Scoreless and quiet through four. Now, inning four was where SCU started in game one. Interesting to see how this all shakes out. I'm Gabriel Shry here with Lorenzo Robinson. Appreciate you being with us all afternoon, all evening. We've got all the action in this one and tomorrow at 12 Eastern between these same teams for game three. Hope you're having a great day and hope you're enjoying all the coverage. Lorenzo, your thoughts on what we've seen so far and what to expect in the rest of this one. Well, we've seen two pitchers going really at a nice pace. They're doing the right things on the mound, very confident. And then in the field, guys are making plays but the bats have not come out to play yet. It'll be interesting to see which team is going to pick up the momentum first. Fouled off. This is Richard Castro at the plate. Rob Adams now into the bottom of the fourth pitching. As great as Herbert's been on the mound, Rob Adams has been just as good for Southeastern. This one goes straight up. Being tracked towards the dugout. And off the top. Castro stays alive, count is 0-2. Scoreless in Waleska between number one, who's on an 18-game win streak in the Reinhardt Eagles. Race down to first, he got him at the bag. One away. Now that was a tremendous play by the third baseman Davis to corral that one and make that throw to first. And then Laura getting the tag. Dropped right in, takes a big swing with one away, count is 0-1. You have to feel like at some point Zadunik is going to make his presence felt in this series. 0 for 6 so far against Southeastern. Now Two away. Number 30, the first baseman, Nash Kroll. We've seen a lot of Nash Kroll this year. Looking good so far today. This is a guy Reinhardt would love to capitalize on being at the plate. The power behind his swing is just insane. Entered this weekend with 32 RBIs this year. Two away, Castro grounded out. Zdunik struck out swinging. Kroll evening the count one and one. Being stared down by Rob Adams, who's pitching very well through four for Southeastern's fire. Kroll holds off, that's low, really tight, almost came into his calves. Two away, bottom of the fourth, here's the 2-1. Kroll chops this left side, chasing down the chalk, and looks like this sailed foul as he gets up to first. I'll say that stayed fair, excuse me. Now batting, number eight, 
Left Davis wasn't a fan of that call. Tried to do his best to recover that when he thought it was foul. I think even Kroll thought that was foul. We can't see the ball go down the left baseline from where we're sitting in the press box, so I got a guess based off of body language, and I was feeling pretty confident based on the way everyone reacted out there that that was foul, but for now... Davis seems to be shaking up a little bit after that play. Yeah, and hopefully he's all right. Never want to see that. They're checking on him. So what they do, we're going to take a break with them. Scoreless. Bottom of the fourth from Alaska, Georgia. College Baseball, SESN. Welcome back to Ken White Field, Wallaska, Georgia, college baseball on SESN. And Reinhardt University back at the plate. Lewis pulls up. Ball one. Dylan Lewis now working with help on board over at first. This is a similar situation to when the Eagles began to get the scoring going in the previous game. One man on first and Luis Mendoza hitting that big time shot over the left field wall. See if history repeats itself here in the bottom of the fourth. Adams drops this in really well thrown. Count is one and two. How about that delivery on the pitch? That's what Rob Adams has done throughout this season. And the year that he's having is being a little bit overshadowed by his teammate Darian Smith, but Rob Adams has had a great year in his own right. Lewis puts this into the outfield, gets down as Kroll advances to second and into scoring position. Lewis will be on at first. Maybe that's what the Eagles needed to start. Getting some momentum going offensively. A two-out rally would do wonders for their confidence moving forward in this game. Luis Mendoza, 15 RBIs this season. Batting average is 338. On base percentage of just shy of 45. With two away from Maleska, Georgia. A scoreless showdown between number one and number 11. SCU number one in the nation. Reinhardt's Eagles number 11 in the United States. Two programs that have had just incredible seasons. 18 wins straight for SCU's fire. Standing by count is one and one with two away. Rob Adams drops that in there. Struck well, left side, it's down. Kroll is coming home. He'll cross the plate and put a run on the board for Reinhardt's Eagles as Lewis makes it down to third. Lewis does not make it to third, and that'll retire the side as we go to the fifth from Alaska, Georgia. College baseball will be back. one nothing. Reinhardt Eagles on SCSN. Sports Network is now on Amazon Fire TV. Now you can download the SESN app and watch on any Amazon-enabled device, such as your Fire Stick. The easiest way to download the app is to go to our website, 
find the Watch SESN tab and click Fire TV app. Then just select your device from the list. That's it. Free and easy. Enjoy watching the Southeast Sports Network on your Fire TV, Fire Stick, or Fire Tablet with just a few clicks. Welcome back to Alaska, Georgia. We played four innings. Welcome to the top of the fifth. Southeastern's fire headed back to the plate, trailing 1-0 as Nash Kroll scored a really nice run. Batted in to finish that up. Lewis singled to the shortstop. Got him up to second. Reinhardt looking in good form as we enter the top of the fifth. But number one, Southeastern Fire. They were scoreless into the fourth inning in game one and then exploded for 19 runs. I mean, just unreal. And just so much talent in their lineup, very capable again of putting up runs in bunches. We've seen it on multiple occasions this year. Now in this game, going up against a pitcher like Andrew Herbert, Reinhardt hoping that that will not be the case in this one. Christopher Munoz 0 for 1 today. Stands by on that for strike one. Top of the fifth from Maleska, Georgia on the Southeast Sports Network. Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson. I know some time has passed, but I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't shut out Luis Mendoza. Kicking off the scoring in the first game, and he does it again in the second Two huge hits for the Reinhardt Eagles in back-to-back -back games against the number one team in the country. Count is one and two. Count is now two and two. Top of the fifth. Fouled off right side, staying alive. Big shout out to Frank Santori tuning in as well. Voice of the Ring Old High School Tigers. Santori used to do the FCS Game of the Week on Sirius Radio. Really great guy watching from Greenville, Tennessee today. Big swing, and he'll go back to the dugout. One away. What nothing, Reinhardt Eagles from Oleska, Georgia. And Herbert threw four and a third, has only surrendered one hit from the Southeastern Fire. Again, you said it earlier, this start very similar to the one that they had in the first game of this series, and we know how that turned out. Did the fire or a pressure cooker? Absolutely. Is that, you look like you don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're just, it feels like they're just waiting to explode. But that's why Andrew Herbert needs to continue to do what he's done on the mound all year long and pretty much all his career at Reinhardt. Count is two and one for Andrew Herbert. Again, the margin of error, the line between winning and losing, especially against good teams, is so slim. Reinhardt holding on to a one-run advantage. And defensively, they played almost perfect. And that's what they're going to have to do if they're going to be able to come away with this victory. One away, Herbert, the 3-1 pitch. That walks Wilkerson down to first. One on board, one away. 
Brandon Mondragon next to the lineup. Over one. Munoz struck out swinging in the top of this fifth inning. Wilkerson walks down to first. He's on the bag. Brandon Mondragon at the plate over one today for the fire in game two. One away in Waleska. They've got Wilkerson on the run. Kroll over his head, trying to chase him down before he can get back to first, and they will. What a play there by Mercerio Allen to chase him down. He could have very easily threw that back to first, but he said, no, I have to do this, and he made that tag. That was a great athletic play there for Mercerio Allen. That was perfectly played by every player involved from Reinhardt. Herbert goes over to Kroll. Kroll has him trapped off the bag. He has to try to go to second. And Allen chases him down from behind. They couldn't have executed that better for their second out. Roped into the outfield. This one's down, and he's free with space to run. Across first, rounding the corner, up to second. Here he comes. He's going to stop in scoring position on second. Probably a good decision with two away in the top of the fifth. That was a big time hit there from Mondragon. Just the second hit for the fire so far in this one. Huge spot. They just picked up their second out. So now just possibly one good, well hit ball away from tying this one back up. Tommy Davis at the plate. 286 batting average this season. 18 RBIs, 22 hits. He's got a runner in scoring position out on second. Davis blasts this left side. Runner across third. He's coming home. Ball is sailing to the catcher. He got him. That'll retire the side in Moleska. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth and be back in just a moment on SESN. What a play. Welcome back. College baseball on the Southeast Sports Network. It's the number one team in the nation, Southeastern University Fire, on an 18-game winning streak. They're trailing to number 11, Reinhardt University, the Eagles. We've got it all on SCSN. Thanks for being with us. Gabriel Shry here, Lorenzo Robinson alongside me. We've got folks tuned in from all over the country. We made a special note tuned in from Australia. Mr. Allen, thank you for watching. If you're watching from somewhere interesting we want to know, be sure to tag us on Twitter. And if it's interesting enough, we'll give you the shout-out you deserve. Lots of ways to catch this game, SESNsports.com. Always free live and in HD. Go to the Watch Live tab. You can find all the options to watch the games there. Get hooked up with us on social media, at SESN Sports, whatever your favorite platform is, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, the new one, X. Mark Zuckerberg Twitter. Mark Zuckerberg. But it's threads. Yeah, it's Threads. Find us threads. on Threads. We've got it. And if you've got a Fire TV or a Fire Stick and you don't want to pull up YouTube, we actually have a Fire app. Find us on Amazon Fire TV, Southeast Sports Network. The link to download it is under the Watch Live tab on our website. 
Crowd's out in full force. Beautiful day for college baseball. one nothing. Reinhardt Eagles in the lead. We've made it to the bottom of the fifth. First game, SCU ran away with it. They exploded in that fourth inning, and they were off to the races. Last week, he was the player of the week for the Appalachian Athletic Conference. This is Marcerio Allen. Big swing. That's strike two. Count is one and two in the bottom of the fifth. Rob Adams, not only has he been effective on the mound, he's been very efficient on the mound as well for Southeastern. Ball's loose. Rattles past the catcher. Count is two and two. He'll punch him out. He's going to go back to the dugout. One away in the bottom of the fifth. Matty Maurer next at the plate for Reinhardt University, the catcher. Did well on his first trip today. Got a hit. Lone run scored by Nash Kroll. First baseman. Mauer hangs off. That's ball one. Count is 1-0. One, oh. one away, bottom of the fifth. Back deep towards the center. It looks like Mauer got it. He did. That's out of here. 2 nothing. Reinhardt University Eagles as Matty Mauer goes yard. Big time solo shot there from Matty Maurer. He's come up big in the biggest moments for the Eagles. And there he is doing it again in another big moment. An insurance run against the number one ranked team in the country. How about Matty Maurer? Sending that out to the road. My goodness, 2-0 Reinhardt Eagles. And following him to the plate is Jamel Rookard. Two nothing, Reinhardt Eagles. And that was huge for Maurer because of course against a team like Southeastern, a lead of just one run is not safe. Two isn't really safe when you think about how quickly they're able to put up runs, but it's a great step in the right direction for Reinhardt. That's kind of where my head was going when you said that. You know, one run isn't safe, two isn't safe either. Of course, two is better than one. Two is always better than one. Uh, not always, but... Just looking at their last few, scored 17 runs against New College of Florida. In game one against Warner University, scored 14. Four, four, five, nine, eight, four runs, 18 runs, six runs, 15, nine, four, nine. I mean, they have a history of scoring. I don't think they've had a game all year long where they've walked away with less than at least three or four. Reinhardt gets this one out into the outfield as well. He's going down to second, but thinks better of it and returns to first. And that one bounced right off of Rob Adams. He wasn't able to corral it. And Jamel Rookard able to use that and get to first. Rookard's on board at first. Jarrett Burney will now come to the plate and bat for the Eagles of Reinhardt University. Two nothing, Reinhardt Eagles, number 11. Are you hosting number one SEU in college baseball on the Southeast Sports Network? Thanks for being with us. One away, bottom of the fifth. This is game two of three. We'll have game three at noon Eastern time tomorrow on SCSN. Jared Bernie over two today at the plate. 
Bernie holds off. That's a strike. Count is one and one, one away. Maddie Maurer hammered a ball just moments ago to extend the lead of the Eagles to 2 nothing. Popped up again and not looking good for Bernie as this one is snagged and two away. Now batting number 12. Two down. Richard Castro. Bernie going to be fall to the plate by Richard Castro for Reinhardt University. Rob Adams looking to take care of business in the bottom of the fifth and send us down the back stretch and into the sixth inning in Waleska, Georgia. Rooker on board over at first. This is Castro at the plate. Castro 0 for 2 in this game. Big swing, strike one. And he tried to get all of that one. Just misjudged it there. Nice pitch from Rob Adams. Laser down inside. A big swing by Castro for strike two. With two away, our count is 0-2 from Alaska, Georgia. Right down inside, Rookard headed down to second and scoring position, and he makes it. Saw the celebration there, Rookard rolled into the dice. Nice chance there taken. Comes up big, gets in the scoring position. So now Castro getting one in play, a base hit. And with the speed of Rooker, that likely brings in another run for the Eagles. One two pitch, Castro fouls off and stays alive. With two away, Rob Adams is looking to just punch out Castro and head to the top of the sixth. The number 11 Reinhardt Eagles hosting the number one SCU Fire. Reinhardt leading 2 nothing. Game two of three on SCSN this weekend. Fits that right in, ball two. Two away, count is two and two. That one finds the turf and fills our count. This has been a nice at bat from Castro. He's been very patient, especially after falling behind in it early, working himself back into a full count. With two away, the payoff pitch, a bit high, and that'll walk him down to first. So Castro's on board, Rooker's on board, two runners on base. Taylor Zadunik will step up to the plate. And you love to see, again, that bat like that from Richard Castro. Sometimes there's some moments where Richard Castro can be a little boom or bust at the plate. Absolutely a guy who's capable of booming, but Sometimes we would like to see that patience just being measured, taking walks. And that's going to go a long way for him as he continues this year. Meeting of the minds on top of the mound. There's a look at our great crowd. Folks on both sides of the stadium, a good turnout today. Tons of kids not in the stands you can't see that have joined us at Ken White Field for college baseball. Two away on this side of the inning. And the fire are just looking to wrap this up and head to the six. Zadunik obviously has other ideas. And again, absolutely due to make something happen. 
0 for 7 so far in this series. It's about time for him to be able to make his presence felt against Southeastern. Appreciate you being with us today. Gabriel Shry here, Lorenzo Robinson alongside me, College Baseball, SCSN. Two nothing Reinhard Eagle lead, two away in the bottom of the fifth. Puts that right down inside, and that'll be strike one. Count is 0 1. Two on board. Popped this up right side. It's headed back towards the wall, sailing for Reinhardt's Eagles. And he's able to gather this up down along the fencing to retire the side and send the fire back to the plate with a chance to score. They trail by two. We'll take a break and be back with more college baseball in just a moment on SCSN. The Sports Network is now on Amazon Fire TV. Now you can download the SESN app and watch on any Amazon-enabled device, such as your Fire Stick. The easiest way to download the app is to go to our website, find the Watch SESN tab, and click Fire TV app. Then just select your device from the list. That's it. Free and easy. Enjoy watching the Southeast Sports Network on your Fire TV, Fire Stick, or Fire Tablet with just a few clicks. Welcome back to Ken Whitefield and Waleska, Georgia. What a beautiful day for baseball we've got. Really lucky today. Appreciate you tuning in and being along for the ride on SCSN and our simulcast. Big thanks to LJ Telephone Company, ETC for carrying it on ETC3. Locally available to over 400,000 subscribers on their cable package. Very much appreciated making local baseball, local athletics at Reinhardt University accessible to fans right here in North Georgia. The top of the six starts now between the Eagles of Reinhardt and the number one SCU fire. Reinhardt ranked number 11 in the nation, SCU ranked number one. And we've got it all on SESN. Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson, thank you for being along for the ride today. Holds off. And Herbert's been so stellar on the mound for Reinhardt throughout this game. And we said how the beginning stages of this one felt eerily similar to the game that we saw. Pagozo puts this down left side, and he's on board at first. Listen, you're going to curse him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as I was going to say, it, se it seemed like this was going to be different. Southeastern trying to prove that it's more of the same. Now batting number nine, the shortstop, Isaac Nunez. So Pagozo singles to left field. Nunez now at the plate. Isaac Nunez over to two today. And obviously the team that came back from a five to nothing deficit to win by 13 runs. They're down two to nothing right now. They're thinking, oh, we got them right where we want them. Peas and carrots. Paul Mendoza, thanks for tuning in from Irvine, California. I don't know if California is exotic, but I wouldn't say it is. I've never been, so anywhere I've never been is exotic to me. Two nothing Reinhardt Eagles lead over the fire. SCU one on board over at first, and the count now two and one. Herbert's pitch count starting to climb into the 70s. Interesting to see how long Coach Burton will stick with him. The 2-1 pitch fouled off into the backstop. 
Count is two and two for Nunez. Check in over with Kroll over at first. We were talking about the head coaches during game one. Jonathan Burton. He's been with Reinhardt for some time now, and he's built a really incredible program. Obviously, this team on the brink of something big this year. And it seems like year after year, the expectation level is raised. Like people aren't just expecting this team this season to be a group that gets invited to the NAI opening round. Now, this is a team with conference championship expectations, NAI World Series expectations, and the talent to be able to accomplish those goals as well. This is year six for Jonathan Burton. The lead Eagle is the fourth head coach in program history. Since 2018, he's been here. Came from Lindsey Wilson of the Mid-South Conference. He also had three seasons of the Trojans of Trevecca Nazarene. Career mark of over 500 wins. 60%. It was 62% at Reinhardt entering this season. 20 wins this year. It's going to rise. Dropped right in, he'll cash out, one away. That was a nice at bat on both sides. Nunez doing everything he could to stay alive, but Andrew Herbert securing the strikeout. Now batting number 12, the pitcher David Castillo. His fourth strikeout of the game. Castillo is 0 for 2 today. Fouled off left side. Adrian Dinkle is in his seventh season at the helm of the fire for SEU. Five straight appearances at the NAI World Series, which blows my mind. That's incredible. That's five consecutive years that your team finishes as a top 10 program. Let's see if we can't steal a look of him hiding down there in the dugout with his guys. This one is driven back deep center towards the wall, and he's down two away in Waleska. Everyone kind of holding their breath, waiting to see where that one went. Jamel Rooker tracking it and securing it at the now warning track. Number 35, the designated hitter, Keith Ryan. It wasn't a slow start for Adrian Dinkle. They gave him the keys to Southeastern University what seems like seven short years ago. 50 wins in his first ever year at the helm. Record-breaking season. Record for school wins. Just really unbelievable what he's been able to do as the man. Chopped left side. Play down at first. He's down. That'll retire the side. We'll take a break and be back with the second half of the inning on the Southeast Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Alaska, Georgia, where it's 2-0 Reinhardt Eagles. A really good matchup today on SCSN. Thanks for being with us. Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson. There's a look at the Eagles of Reinhardt. This graphic a little outdated. They lost game one, so 20 and 11 overall. 329 as a team. Entered the weekend with 41 home runs. Meanwhile, on the other side, now 18 wins straight, 29 on the season for the fire of Southeastern University. 
batting 300 as a team. Gabriel Shry here, Lorenzo Robinson alongside me. Appreciate you being with us and stepping into the booth for a second. What does this look like down the stretch to you? We talked earlier about how Southeastern has never finished with less than three or four runs this season. Are they going to explode down the stretch, or does Reinhardt have it in the tank? Does Herbert have it in the tank to finish this off? You have to believe that Reinhardt's going to do everything they can to finish this one out. But again, we just saw what Southeastern was able to do in that last game. We know what they're capable of. I just want to say I'm glad that we have a chance to witness it. Nash Kroll going to be the first at the plate on this side of the inning. Bottom of the six, 2 nothing. Reinhardt Eagles. Dropped right in perfectly as Kroll takes a big swing and can't make contact. Kroll is just an electric power hitter for Reinhardt University. It's already strike two for Kroll. Kroll one for two at the plate in this game. Goes left side. A race down to first, and he loses that. One away, bottom of the sixth. Now batting number eight, left fielder Dylan Lewis. Rob Adams has been very good on the mound for Southeastern. Across five and a third, four strikeouts. He's only walked one batter. Rob Adams has been really good. He's given up two earned runs. And remember, that margin between winning and losing, especially against good teams, so slim. Lewis sends this deep towards the outfield wall, and he's going to go down. Two away in the bottom of the sixth. Luis Mendoza. Luis Mendoza going to replace him at the plate. Lewis now one for three on his chances today as we're wrapping up the bottom of the sixth quickly between the Fire and the Eagles. This is exactly how it looked in the bottom of the third in game one. Quickly flipped back on top. Southeastern came out, cranked in a run. It wasn't until the top of the fifth inning, though, that they poured on four. And that's the thing. You can never be too comfortable when going against Southeastern. If you're Reinhardt with a two-run lead, you know that you likely are going to have to score more in order to beat this team. And then you said, does Andrew Herbert have it in the tank? And that's going to be a big question. His pitch count getting close to 80. I mean, Rob Adams has allowed two runs, but... This is, Ryan, this is number 11, Reinhardt. They've been a run machine this season. Again, that margin between winning and losing, so, so slim. And he's playing great. But Andrew Herbert has shut out the Southeastern fire. Yeah, Southeastern run machine. 0-2 oh, count, two away. Bottom of the six from Alaska, Georgia. Mendoza hit with the ball. Hopefully he's all right. They're going to send him down the line, up the chalk to first. Hate to see that happen to anyone. We'll have the third game of this series tomorrow. Noon Eastern Standard Time, 12 p.m. Be sure to tune in and join us on SCSM. Wherever you're watching now, we'll have the game. Mendoza going to get a pinch runner on this. Hopefully he's all right. He looked a little shaken up. Jacob Prophet will take his place over on first. Marcerio Allen now at the plate. He's over 2 in this game. He was unreal last week in a triple header against KCU, the Appalachian Athletic Conference Player of the Week and well-deserved. Stats were unreal against the Knights. Named the Player of the Week after he had two home runs, seven RBIs on the week, batted 556 in the three-game series. He scored six runs himself. Really just unbelievable. He also stole a couple of bases. What makes that so great is that when you look at the scouting report and 
you see a lot of the attention that Reinhardt receives. A lot of it goes to guys like Zdunik, guys like Dylan Lewis, Nash Kroll, with good reason as well. They're really great players who have done it on a consistent basis for more than one season. But Marcelio Allen getting player of the week, just another great reminder of the depth of talent that this team has and why they feel like this is the year for them to make a deep run going into the NAI World Series. Two away, here's the 0-2. Chopped left side, this stays fair, just along the line. Runner advances down to second, and he's out at first, so that'll retire the side. We go to the seventh in Waleska, Georgia. We'll be back, 2-0 Reinhardt Eagle lead on SCSN. Welcome to SESN, your ticket to the front row of the sports world, covering local, regional, and national events. We bring the game to you. Feel the excitement of every play, every score, every victory. Get your seat, get on air, and immerse yourself in the heart-pounding action. The Southeast Sports Network, where sports come to life. Welcome back to Waleska, Georgia, and on to Ken White Field, college baseball on the Southeast Sports Network. Thanks for being with us, Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson. We've got all the action for you in this triple header. Three-game series, two today, one tomorrow. We'll have game three as well, noon Eastern Standard Time on SESN. Wherever you're watching now, the game will be available there. Here's a look at the top 25 right now in the country, and as you can see right on top, Number one, Southeastern. They're trailing as we enter the top of the seventh. Two nothing to the Eagles of Reinhardt University. A couple of other programs that are probably familiar to fans watching today. On that list, a couple of Appalachian Athletic Conference programs. Point University down along the Alabama line, receiving votes for the top 25. Really good pull. Lots of great competition. And programs that these two are familiar with, They've both played a really tough schedule this year, Lorenzo. And battle-tested, battle-ready. That's what you need to be when you go into the postseason. You need to be able to have those experiences going up against some of the top teams in the country. So now when every game matters, you're used to playing in those high-leverage situations. An interesting decision from Coach Burton leaving Andrew Herbert on the mound and you can't really blame him. Herbert's been great. This right here is going to be his 80th pitch of the game. Have to wonder if fatigue does become a factor for him. And of course, some of the recent struggles that Reinhardt has had with their bullpen arms as well. The one and one, big swing, strike two. Feels like he wants to get as much out of Herbert as he possibly can in this game. He certainly has. He's been unreal. The 2-2. That fills our count. He's still clocking it at 90, so... Still able to throw it hard. The main thing when you talk about pitchers as they fatigue, location, being able to put it exactly where you want it. Towards the wall, left side, and well tracked through the sun and the wind. One away in the top of the seventh. Gary Lara can't work with that. Over three on the day. He's replaced at the plate. My familiar face. We've seen this guy a couple of times. Our today it's the second baseman, Christopher Munoz, Jr. from Bronx, New York. Munoz is 0 for 2 today. He's due on the season, 259 batting average. Pops it up, and this goes foul. Yeah. 
Southeastern behind by two runs, but I'd be remiss if I didn't go back to a play that happened, I believe, in the fifth inning. They had a man on his way home trying to beat out a throw and just started his slide too far away. Those are the kind of mistakes. That margin is so razor thin that plays like that, that maybe in one game it's just one run. It won't matter as much when you're playing up against a team like Reinhardt and in Reinhardt's case playing against a team like Southeastern. Those are the plays that cost you games. The one-two pitch. Popped up, left side, driven back deep towards the wall. Reinhardt's outfielder has this, two away in Waleska. Two well hit balls by Southeastern, but both of them having warning track power. Jamel Rickard doing a nice job tracking them through the air. Andrew Herbert picking him up and knocking him down. He's just continuing to do his thing out there on the mound. 18 game win streak fire trailing 2 0 to the number 11 Reinhardt Eagles. Two away in the seventh. Here's the 0 1. Right side. This one sails foul on him. Really well struck. And just riding the chalk, that one trends out. And Reinhardt caught up a bit of a break there. That one was going to go right into that right field corner. It was going to be a difficult run there for Tucker to to go get that one. Luckily for them, just on the wrong side of the foul line. Wilkerson hot this weekend already. 24 hits this season. 333. His batting average this year. Wilkerson exploded in game one, quiet in game two. He's 0 for 1 on his one trip to the plate in this one. Two away in the seventh. Count is 1 and 2. Herbert. Put that right in there, popped up, sailing. Back towards the wall, this one trends. Off the mark for Wilkerson. He does stay alive, he'll keep at it. Really low. Herbert, ball two. Two away, count is two and two. Herbert has cashed out four. With two away, that fills our count. Just want to be able to get out of this inning unscathed. He's right there, two strikes on the board. The payoff pitch with two away, and that retires the side. Herbert heads back to the dugout. We go to the bottom of the seventh on SCSN between Reinhardt's Eagles and the SCU Fire. Don't go anywhere. At Shrine Media, we believe in the power of connection, promoting your brand while supporting your community. Our goal is to elevate your presence and amplify your message through local sports. With Shry Media, advertising goes beyond traditional boundaries. Get on television, make an impact. Take the first step towards a future where your brand is not just seen, but celebrated. Welcome back to Ken White Field and Waleska, Georgia. 2 0 Reinhardt Eagle lead over the number one Southeastern University fire on SESN. Reinhardt, number 11 in the nation. We're flipping sides right now, headed into the bottom of the seventh. I'm Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson here with me. Two really good programs. Reinhardt, a 21 team. SCU is on an 18 game win streak, which is just, I just can't get over that. It's very difficult to be able to win that many games in a row. 
again because I've said it time and time again. It's so easy to lose a game. It's so easy to slip up and have a game where you just don't show up or, you know, you're not performing to your standard. So being able to get 18 in a row, definitely something that they should be proud of, especially with the schedule that they played as well. Yeah, really great strength of schedule both ways, both programs. Thanks for being with us from all around the world. From coast to coast, stateside, we've got folks down under in Australia. Love to see it. Now, Reinhardt, again, they've had some big series wins this year. And if you're just talking about purely from an importance to your season perspective, a Tennessee Wesleyan series victory probably will trump anything else that they do for the, for the rest of this season just because that's a team that they'll be jockeying in position for in the top of the Appalachian Athletic Conference. But in terms of just a big win, a win that means a lot to the team and will cause real conversation around the country, they wouldn't have a bigger win than a victory against the number one ranked Southeastern Fire. Count is two and one. That was strike two. Now here's the two two. That fills our count. Matty Maurer electric in this second game. Two for two at the plate. He's got an RBI. It was him. And Matty Mauer doing what he does best. Blast this left side. Now that one looks well short of the fence, and he'll go back to the dugout one away. Now batting number one, the center fielder, Jamal Ripper. This one's shaping up to be a down to the wire finish. 2-0 Reinhardt Eagles lead. In the bottom of the seventh from Maleska, Georgia with one away. Huge swing there. Couldn't get contact with the barrel of the bat. Looking to cushion the lead with a swing like that. And Southeastern going with Ramsey David on the mound, making that pitching change. David sporting a 2-7 ERA. This is seventh relief appearance of the season. And he was just clocked at 96 miles an hour. That's cooking. That's some heat coming out of your bullpen. Count is one and two, one away. Rooker, that first swing, that first strike, if he had made contact with that, we're talking NORAD project. 96 miles an hour. His off speed's 85. Gas, straight gas. One away, bottom of the seventh, two nothing, Reinhardt Eagle lead. Here's the two two. Really well framed. That fills our count. I almost thought he got the strike there. I mean, again, getting clocked at 96. Not something you see too often. But Jamel Rooker, a very disciplined uh, plate appearance there. Rooker takes the walk up the chalk, down to first. Man on board, now Jarrett Bernie will follow him. This is a guy who's been a key piece all year. He's been a big hitter. And he's 0 for 3 in this game. He's 0 for 3 in this game so far. and Also, Tucker Zadunik has struggled in this game as well. He's 0 for 3. But still, Reinhardt currently with a lead that has to make you feel good about where they are right now. And then, because of how well Bernie and Zadunik and these guys have played throughout this year, you have to believe that they're due to make something happen. Premium, unleaded, gasoline. Davis is throwing heat. One and one. Chopped left side, Bernie, how did he get the bat on that? Rounding the bases, here comes Rooker, he's gonna come home with it. Ball chasing him down, he's safe. 
Three nothing, Reinhardt. Rooker throws himself over the plate to extend the lead of the Eagles. Three to nothing over the fire of Southeastern University in Waleska, Georgia. And right on cue, Jared Bernie, 0 for 3 in this game. But if you've seen Jared Bernie play not just this season, but throughout his time at Reinhardt, you knew that at some point in this game, he was going to make his presence felt. And what better time to do so than here in the seventh with a big time RBI double. Chopped right side, the same look the other side of the field. He's down to first. Now runners on the corners for Reinhardt University with one away in the bottom of the seventh. And now Richard Castro joining the party. The Eagle Bats starting to come alive here in the seventh inning. And all of a sudden, this one is getting very interesting for Reinhardt. Maybe they sense that they have a great chance here. Davis throwing absolute missiles, but back-to-back -back contact for the Eagles. Looking good, looking sharp batting. A little weather update from Maleska. The sun has decided to come right for us. Absolutely. This is aggressive. Shine right into my eye like a jab. I was just very unprepared for it. I'm in pain. <laughs> I need sunglasses and there's an umbrella in here. Can you get that umbrella out. So first one's a strike. We saw two guys, Jared Bernie and Richard Castro, didn't have a hit coming into this inning. Back-to-back -back hits from those guys. Wouldn't it just make sense to see one from Tucker Zadunik as well? 0 for 3 in this one. Doesn't have a hit in this series so far. Again, it's very rare for Zadunik to play two bad games in a row. You have to figure that he's due to make something happen. Yeah, Jarrett Bernie was 0 for 3 before he got that hit and advances down and is safe. The pinch runner at second. So now two runners in scoring position. Zadunik, you're right. Really rare to see him have two games back to back that aren't great. His batting average is over. It's 415. Really wild. And he's got 32 RBIs this season, 44 hits. 0 for 3, just like Bernie. Up the chalk. He's down. Two away. Now batting number 30. Here's baseman Nat. Whoa. That's directly our fault. Absolutely, but we were bragging on Davis and he started, he, he gave up two hits as soon as we started talking about how well he was pitching. I don't believe in the announcer's jinx though. It's not like they can hear what we're saying. I'm just, I feel, I feel like I am cursed. <laughs> I just, I've ruined more careers by complimenting guys <laughs> from a hundred feet away. Oh, for one, two away. Davis, a big swing by Kroll. That's strike two. In this situation, two runners in scoring position. There are a few bets in the country that you would trust more than Nash Kroll. I'm cursed. Cursed. 100% cursed. I'm telling you. You don't believe me. We'll be back with more of the announcer's curse on SCSN in just a moment. 3 nothing, Reinhardt Eagles. Welcome back to Waleska, Georgia, and on to Ken White Field. 3-0 Reinhardt Eagle lead. We played one and three quarters. I don't know. I was going to say the fraction, but that's probably not right. 
One full game. We're into the eighth of our second game of a three-game series between the Eagles of Reinhardt, the fire of Southeastern University. What a great matchup this has been. Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson, thanks for being with us. And again in the eighth inning, Andrew Herbert remains on the mound. 96 pitches and counting. Again, you do want to wonder, will fatigue be a factor? But you can't blame Coach Burton for trying to ride him as long as he can. Again, Burton, Herbert being one of his better pitchers. That's down, free around first, and making his way up into scoring position at second. He's on the bag. A runner on second, just like that. Brandon Mondragon gets on base. One for two as he stepped up to the plate. Now two for three on the day in game two. And again, this is what you want to prevent. You do have to think about that fatigue again being a factor. If you get up to that triple digits in pitches, that's kind of a cardinal sin when you're talking about aces, and that's in the major league. So at the collegiate level, it's definitely there as well. Man on board at second. This is Tommy Davis. Davis popped up right side, sailing towards the outfielder, and he'll retire one. One away, keeping Mondragon put in scoring position on second. In the top of the eighth from Aleska, Georgia, between the fire, number one in the nation, SCU, and number 11, Reinhardt's Eagles, who are in the lead, 3 nothing. But again, I was going to say, you can't really blame Coach Burton for wanting to ride Herbert as long as he can. For two reasons. Number one, because of how talented Herbert is, how great we've seen him be over these last two years. And then the second part of that is some of the struggles that Reinhardt's had coming out of the bullpen in these last few games. I want to try to give Herbert as much leash as you can. The 1-0 pitch is a strike. One away. Top of the eighth from Aleska, Georgia. Southeastern fire. They've got five outs left to play with here to try and get back in front of the Eagles, but we both know they're more than capable of exploding. One on board out at second. Hangs off. One away. Count is now two and one. One for two on the day, or at least in game two, Josh Pagozo. Fire do have a runner in scoring position. Chance to make something happen and get on the board. Obviously, Herbert with other ideas. Herbert's just checking on him. And that's better than making the inside move and not throwing it. Just to, you know, just get it out there. Save that just in case you really need to be able to have your one free pass. One away. Count is two and one. Zips that one right inside. Ball three. And again, velocity's not an issue when you talk about fatigue and pitchers. Herbert was right at 90 earlier in this game. That one was at 89. So very similar. The main things, location and placement. Things to think about as he gets further and further into his pitch count. That'll walk Josh Pagozo up the chalk over to first. Two runners on board now for SCU. Now and over 100 on. pitches, Andrew Andy. Herbert. Andy. He struck out five today. Pagozo and Mondragon on board. Brandon Mondragon at second, Pagozo at first. This is Isaac Nunez, and he's 0 for 3 on the day in this second game. He also represents the tying run at the plate for Southeastern. We're in the top of the eighth from Maleska, Georgia at Ken White Field. There's strike one. And if Herbert can manage to get out of this inning unscathed or maybe just one run surrendered, as Coach Burton, you would feel very tempted to give him a chance to get the final three outs in the ninth. Moving around back there. Again, I do wonder how much he has left in the tank. Oh, 
That's a long day on the mound. Absolutely. He'll probably graduate at the end of this game, right? It's probably about a full collegiate career. Blasted deep down the center, and the center fielder grabs this, two away. Brandon Mondragon advances down to third. Well played by him, tags the bag, gets down in scoring position. Now we have runners on the corners in Waleska in a three-run game, number 11, Reinhardt leading number one, SCU. Now batting number 12, the catcher, David Castillo. David Castillo over three. Struck out once already by Herbert today. And in the booth, I'm looking ahead to the ninth, but Andrew Herbert, he can't look ahead. He needs to focus right now on Castillo to try to finish this inning out. Popped up with two away, deep center field. This could retire the side and it will. We go to the bottom of the eighth in Moleska, Georgia between the Eagles of Reinhardt and the fire of SCU. Don't go anywhere. Three run game, we'll be back on SCSN. Sports Network is now on Amazon Fire TV. Now you can download the SESN app and watch on any Amazon enabled device, such as your Fire Stick. The easiest way to download the app is to go to our website, find the Watch SESN tab, and click Fire TV app. Then just select your device from the list. That's it. Free and easy. Enjoy watching the Southeast Sports Network on your Fire TV. Fire Stick or Fire Tablet with just a few clicks. Welcome back inside of Ken White Field from Maleska, Georgia. It's college baseball on the Southeast Sports Network. Appreciate you tuning in, jumping on board for the ride. Gabriel Shry, Lorenzo Robinson here as we're down the back stretch. Into the bottom of the eighth between the Fire, who are number one in the nation, and the number 11, Reinhardt Eagles, who lead 3-0. A quick look at the top 25. This is 16 through a few of the teams receiving votes. Here's your top 15 of that top 25, and right on top, Southeastern's Fire. They've been electric this year. This record is outdated. It's from the last time the poll was released. Same for Reinhardt's Eagles. We're ready to go. We're the bottom of the eighth from Waleska, Georgia. It's college baseball on SESN. This one delivered a bit tight. That's a ball. Bottom of the eighth, Reinhardt looking for some crucial cushion as this one's sent left side. Really nice play as that stays fair. But he's sent out. What away? That son is a crime. Strike one counts on one. It's violent too. Violence a good. <laughs> violent is the only it's way violent. you can describe what's. <laughs> Got a true freshman here with us, a local guy from the team helping out today with the broadcast, and he's in the sun. I don't even know how he can see anything. I'm blind on a normal day, so the sun would just... <laughs> one away, count is one and two. David with gas. This one chopped left side through the infield, and he's cut down at first. Really nice play by the shortstop. Profit can't escape down to the bag. Two away already. And looking to wrap up the bottom of the eighth and get back on the offensive side of things. Southeastern's fire trailing by three runs to the number 11 Reinhardt Eagles. And Allen, another guy 0 for 3 so far in this game. With the way that he played last week, the way that he's played throughout this year. Someone that you have to feel is due to make something happen. Blasted straight up. This sales foul. 
Strike one, two away, bottom of the eighth from Waleska, Georgia, college baseball on SESN. And for David, it's been almost all straight heat since coming into the game. Another one, 96 miles an hour. With all the gas he's playing with, you could open a gas station. Fire out here. 0-2 oh, pitch. Straight super, too. Premium. Unleaded. No regular. I can't believe how well he's pitching. Ramsey David right on cue. Two away, count is two and two. Bottom of the eighth, Reinhardt Eagles a three-run lead. They were looking to cushion it. Allen pulls off, and that fills our count. Two away, full count for Marcerio Allen, who's at the plate. 0 for 3 in this game. Player of the week last week for Reinhardt and the Appalachian Athletic Conference. Big swing, cash him out and send us to the ninth at Ken White Field. Don't go anywhere. College baseball will return in a moment on SESN. Welcome back to Alaska, Georgia. Thanks for being with us on SESN. Three-run game, Reinhardt's Eagles, number 11 in the nation, leading the number one Southeastern Fire as we've come into the final inning. The top of the ninth is now on SESN, and we just can't believe it in the booth. We're impressed, we're excited. Back on top of the mound, the pitcher for Reinhardt, he enters the ninth inning, 107 pitches thrown. And who else but Andrew Herbert again? Honorable mention, All-American selection a year ago. First team, all-conference. He's undefeated so far this season. There's not many more things you could say about how well he's been since he's been in an Eagle uniform. And right now, trying to finish it off in the ninth inning, you got to give him a lot of credit. And then Coach Burton going with the decision. And we talked about it a little bit over the break. Would, what would you do? Would you keep him in? Would you take him out? But Coach Burton's forgotten more baseball than I'll ever know. How default to his ability to make decisions. And he feels like Andrew Herbert gives him the best chance to win. The top of the ninth. South Seether and Fire are at the plate. Chase Bryant today, one for three in the second game. He was one of those guys that came up with a huge hit to help spark that rally for Southeastern in the previous game. They could really use something from Chase here. 18 RBIs this season. That doesn't do him much good, though, with nobody in front of him. He does have 17 hits. His average, 327. Andrew Herbert, the 0-2, and one cashed out. Back to the dugout in Waleska. And that's how you start the ninth inning right there. Is he going to go? Is he going to go out there? What's going to happen? Starting out with a strikeout. Replaced at the plate by Gary Laura, who's 0 for 3 on this day. Game 2, he's been cold. Nice contribution in game one for SCU as they rolled to a 13-run win. Right now they trail three runs to nothing to number 11, Reinhardt. The number one fire, one away, count is 2-0. Andrew Herbert came into this ninth inning having thrown 107 pitches and strikes out the first batter at the plate. We were worried he wouldn't be able to handle it. What are we talking about? Again, Coach Burton's forgotten more baseball than I'll ever know. I will always default to him when it comes to decision-making and Andrew Herbert making him look like a very, very smart man on that first at-bat. 
The 2-1. Chopped right side. Stays fair and two away in the top of the ninth from Aleska, Georgia. Just like that, Reinhardt one out away from securing the biggest win of the season thus far. Mr. Herbert. Two down, one to go, and Reinhardt will take their check and a big victory against the number one Southeastern Fire. The Fire, all it takes is one nice hit, and they'll be rolling and in position to walk out with a win in game two. Fouled off. Christopher Munoz, very high pressure situation here. Over one, two away. They really need Munoz to do something. Big swing, strike two. Top of the ninth, two away. Andrew Herbert, 107 pitches entering the ninth. He's thrown 114 right now. The 0-2 pitch. Holding off, there's ball one. Two away, Munoz at the plate. The one, two, roped into the outfield, it's down. He's gonna get on the bag at first. Wanted to take second, holds off, probably a wise decision. Big time there from Munoz. Getting on base, one, two, count one strike away from the game being over. He comes up with a big time single to keep the fire alive in this one. Wilkerson was hot in the first game today, but cold in the second game. 24 hits this season, 333 batting average. He's 0 for 2 in game two. Roped right side, it gets down and stays fair. We've got runners moving across second, now down to third. He's gonna stay put. And Wilkerson on board at second. So two in scoring position with two away in the top of the ninth. Two runners in scoring position. A very dangerous time here for the Reinhardt Eagles. Andrew Herbert has been so great throughout this game. Two outs on the board here in the top of the ninth inning. A chance to finish it off. But Southeastern, they're going to make him work to finish this game. Mondragon is two for three today. Reinhardt leading three runs to nothing with two away in the top of the ninth. Big swing, strike one. This is where legends are made right here. Big moment for Andrew Herbert, big moment for the Reinhardt Eagles. The 0-1 pitch. Low, that's a ball. Two away in Waleska, Georgia. A gentle breeze coming from the left side of the screen to the right across the field. Tussling the American flag in the face of the sunset as we get ball two. Two away count is two and one. Andrew Herbert with the sunshine at his back looking to close things up. Number one, Southeastern, a well-placed hit here. Can tie the game. Chopped. This goes left side. One across. And so the fire get a run back as it's 3-1 in Waleska, Georgia. And here comes Coach Burton. It seems like Herbert's day might be done here. He tried to give him a chance to finish off the shutout. But Southeastern building up some momentum, putting a run on the board. They're saying not so fast. There's still plenty of game left. Two-run game, top of the ninth, two away. Herbert had thrown 109 pitches entering the top of the ninth. Struck out the first batter in this inning. And now it's decision time. He put two outs on the board really quick. And you can hear that crowd giving him a lot of love and it's very well deserved from Andrew Herbert. One of the more admirable pitching performances that I've seen at the collegiate level in a long time. Great performance from Andrew Herbert. Deserves all the attention and all the praise. So now Brett Allen comes to the mound trying to finish things off. Just one out away from securing a victory against the number one ranked team in the country. 
Mm. Brett Allen. High pressure situation for the junior right-handed pitcher from Newcastle, Australia. Transfer from Barton. Tommy Davis will be at the plate for the fire of Southeastern. And right now it's just a two run game between these two. How do you prepare for this kind of situation practicing throughout the week? Is there anything you can do to get ready for this kind of pressure? You know, I know in, in other sports there's all kinds of great drills you can do, but as a pitcher, is there any way you can simulate this level of pressure? There's no way you can really simulate it because even I'll just take it to my sport in football. You work, you do two-minute drills and put yourself in those situations. Yeah, you can practice the situation, but you can't practice the feeling that you have in that situation. So as much as you can try to put yourself in those kind of environments, nothing beats being in that situation and actually having to go through it. Two away in a two-run game. The top of the ninth. Well delivered for strike one. With two away, the 0-1 pitch for Allen. High and a bit wide, ball one. Southeastern has runners on the corners. The one and one. Chopped left side. This sails foul on SCU. An 18 game win streak is on the line for the fire of Southeastern University. Number one consensus, unanimous in the United States, battling the number 11 Eagles from the foothills of the Smoky Mountains in Waleska, Georgia. This is Tommy Davis, who's one for three in game two at the plate. Two away, Allen in for relief for Herbert. The one, two, chopped off, foul, he stays alive. And again, we saw it earlier in this inning, Andrew Herbert was up 0-2 on the count. And then they were just forcing him to work deeper and deeper into his pitch count. All of a sudden, Southeastern beginning a rally. Swing and that retires the side. Big victory for Reinhardt's Eagles at home in Waleska, Georgia. They upset the number one team in the nation, 3-1. What a finale from Waleska, Georgia. What a finish by the pitching staff as well. Herbert, 109 pitches entering the final inning. Relieved for Allen. Allen is able to finish things off. How about that performance from Herbert? It was absolutely sensational. And it seemed like every inning past the six, we were saying, man, is Coach Burton going to stick with him? Is he going to stick with him? And every time he kept trusting him and kept giving him chances, and he got right all the way up to the point and just needed a little bit of help to get across the finish line, and Brett Allen doing a nice job finishing things off. And Brett Allen, the junior right-hander from Australia, comes in, finishes things off. A big performance for him as well to cap off a really great ninth inning. Reinhardt upsets the number one team in the country, the Southeastern Fire. An 18-game win streak is snapped. Reinhardt doing themselves some favors of that. Their 21st win on the season. Number 11 and number one will battle again tomorrow at noon Eastern time here on the Southeast Sports Network. We hope you'll be with us. Any final thoughts on today's game from you, Lorenzo? Reinhardt ranked 11th in the country. Southeastern is one. They've had a few close contests with some other top 10 teams. Well, that game right there shows you Reinhardt can play with just about anybody in the country and they're ready to take that next step into becoming one of the NAIA's elite programs. You're not kidding. A lot of fun here today, Lorenzo. Thank you for being with me and thank everybody for tuning in around the country and the globe. 
for Lorenzo, our entire crew, the Eagles, and the Fire. I'm Gabriel Fry saying so long from Alaska, Georgia, with the final score, an Eagle victory 3-1. This has been College Baseball. All games and events airing on our networks are broadcast live in our copyright material. Today's game will be archived inside of the app or platform where you viewed it and available for replay. This has been a presentation of the Southeast Sports Network. Join SESN for an unmatched sports experience. Dive into the world of game highlights, real-time updates, and electrifying coverage. With SESN, you're not just watching sports, you're living them. Be the first to know, the first to see, and the first to share every big moment. The Southeast Sports Network, where sports come to life. My character, Shazam, knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward.